Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We are continuing our series of daily morning meditations, looking generally at one of the lessons that are appointed for either morning or evening prayer, what we call the daily office lectionary. And we're continuing to plow our way now through St. Paul's letter to the Romans. This is one of the meteor theologically important letters of St. Paul. I mean, they're all theologically important, of course. But St. Paul is laying out to the Romans as this letter of introduction, the weightiness of the theology of the inclusion of both the Gentile and the Jew in the new covenant with God through Jesus Christ. Uh, and so obviously he's addressing issues that continue to come up in all of his journeys on why it is that one, the Gentiles should be included in the new covenant uh, when the original covenant was just with the people of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as well as to answer the important question is why isn't it that more Jewish people are not coming to realize the truth about God in Jesus Christ, that Jesus is in fact the fulfillment of God's promise to send a Messiah. And of course, the key to that is the word sin. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. And so St. Paul jumps right into this. Remember in chapter one and two, we talked about the various sins that are separating us from God. And St. Paul continues to, to chop away on that particular uh, theme in chapter three. Uh, but he talks about what is the advantage then to being Jewish? Well, the advantage to being Jewish is that the Jewish people have the oracles of God. They have the prophets, they have the teaching. They are at least understanding, they have the knowledge of their sinfulness. The original covenant itself could not prevent their sinfulness, uh, but rather gave them an understanding of how it is that they were supposed to live. Uh, whereas the Gentiles just stumbled into sinful sinfulness on their own merits or lack of merits thereof. And so it is that St. Paul builds up that in fact, the remedy for both the Jew and for the Gentile is still the blood of Jesus Christ because the law itself could not bring righteousness because nobody could really fully, completely, and totally keep the law that God had revealed. All what the law does is teach us just how sinful we are and how necessary it is for us to turn to Jesus Christ for forgiveness and for mercy and for the grace to battle against the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil. So picking up in chapter three uh, at verse number 10, um, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, and there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are altogether become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So that's starting to sound pretty dreadful and hopeless. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So this is the depth of the fallen condition that is happening both to the Jew and to the Gentile, even those who should know the law, uh, because we're so deeply affected by, the, by, by sin itself. Um, now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, and that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So in other words, the keeping of the old law could not bring salvation. Rather, what the keeping of the old law did was convict us of our sinfulness and our need to depend upon God for his love and mercy and for forgiveness. And this can be a hard pill for us to swallow because quite frankly, most of us want to be able to think we can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and do it our own way. Uh, the, uh, we always joke about the Frank Sinatra theme song uh, is the sinner's theme song, I did it my way. But the reality is, is that we need to learn how to do it God's way. And so the keeping of the original law all that did was to further convince us and convict us of our sinfulness. It was impossible to keep the wholeness and the fullness of the law. 
And therefore, salvation had to come not through relationship to Abraham, not through the trying to keep of the, of the precepts. And of course, what St. Paul ends up arguing with all throughout the various epistles is the reality that we do not have to keep the law to be members of the new covenant. Uh, that becomes an argument that, that is often foisted upon Paul, that, that these new Christians need to be circumcised. These new Christians uh, who are Gentiles need to follow the Jewishness of the religion. And Paul says, that's been done away. That's been put aside. Uh, the commandments are still true. The, the teaching about God is still true. Uh, but the reality is, is that salvation itself comes through faith in Jesus Christ. And of course, that will be coming up as St. Paul builds up and builds up and builds up uh, and helps us to realize that the natural consequence of our sin, of our sinfulness is death. Uh, but by grace and mercy, we receive forgiveness and eternal life through Jesus Christ. So I hope that you have a great Thursday and may God bless you.